Now, uh, when we're talking about antiderivatives, what we think is about the reverse idea of uh, the derivative. So we have um, a function such that the derivative of that function is a, a particular uh, result, then um, what we're going to think of antiderivative is from that result, we can return to the original function. And that's precisely what we mean here. So a function big F is an antiderivative of F if um, the derivative of big F is going to be a small f. Okay? Confusing you, I know. But um, in this case, what happens is that big F is going to be uh, the antiderivative of uh, the function f on a given interval and might happen that any variation plus a constant of that function is going to be an antiderivative as well. Now, let's see that with an example so we can um, actually get what we're doing and then we'll define a better notation to not confuse ourselves with big F or small f. So consider the formula derivative with respect to x of x equals one. That is going to imply that the function a small f of x is one and the function big F of x is x. Notice that that is clear. This is an antiderivative of f, is the opposite. It's like, oh, okay, so from here I can return to the probable function where this was derived, which is x, okay? And notice that if I take the derivative of f of x, big F of x equals x, then I'm going to get a one, okay? Now, um, there's a lot of functions that produce that. So if I take x or x plus two or x plus 3.5 or x minus one or x minus three, when I take derivative of all those functions, it's always going to be one. In general, if g is an antiderivative of this function a small g, then the graph of the antiderivatives of a big G plus C is just vertical translation of each other. So for example, this is the antiderivative and any other variation is just gonna be a, moving a constant up or down, as you can see here as well. Now, because uh, the column big F as a small f is such a hassle, where we need to look for a different notation for antiderivatives. Now, the definition that we're going to use is called the integral or indefinite integral, which is this that you can see here. From this, every time that this sign is appearing is followed by a function that is going to be called the integrand, which is the function f of x here, small f of x. And uh, dx just is simply the differential that is telling me that the independent variable or the variable of integration is x. And the notation overall represent all the possible antiderivatives of this function. So whenever you complete whatever this is, you're going to get your function big F and of course plus C. Now let's let's take a look at an example of this and, and let's start with uh, the basics. So the, the most easy derivative was the power. And uh, with the power, when we take derivative, we put down the P. The, the exponent, and then we subtract one. In antiderivative, we're going to do the opposite. Instead of uh, putting down and multiplying uh, by the exponent, we're going to divide by the exponent plus one, and we're gonna add one to the exponent as well. So let's say um, the antiderivative of x squared is going to be x cubed divided by three, and so on. Now, uh, antiderivative there behave very similar to derivatives. Uh, we can take out a constant and we can split uh, the sum. So for example, if we're taking antiderivative of a constant by the function, we can just multiply by the constant out and uh, just worry about what the antiderivative is. Similarly with the sum rule, if you're taking the antiderivative of a sum of two functions, you can just split that in the sum of the two antiderivatives. Here, there's going to be a summary of the main anti basic antiderivative that we're going to manage. Since um, 
I can list the relationship between the derivative and the function, then I can also show how it's going back. So notice, because the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x, then I can go back and say, oh, okay, so the antiderivative of cosine of x is going to be sine of x. Similarly for sine, the derivative of cosine is minus sine, so, oh, okay, so the antiderivative of sine is going to be minus cosine. Now, similarly, the derivative of tangent is secant squared, so that means the antiderivative of secant squared is going to go back to be tangent. As you can see, we can follow the rest of the trigonometric um, antiderivatives in the same way. Now, let's, let's take a look at different functions. Uh, if we do the exponential, notice that the derivative of the exponential is the same exponential. So with the integral, we're going to get something similar. The antiderivative of e to the x is just e to the x plus c. And uh, with things with the log, the derivative of the log was 1 over x. So the integral of 1 over x is log of x plus c. Notice that this 1 over x is the same as x minus 1. And that's the only difference with this scenario. The only, the only case where this formula is not applying is when p is minus 1, which was 1 over x. And so that's going to give me this log, okay? So be careful with the scenario where p is minus 1, because we are in this scenario here. Now, for the inverse trigonometric functions, we have the same relationship. So uh, we get to do very complicated antiderivatives with this. Uh, the derivative of sine to the minus 1 is 1 over uh, square root of 1 minus x squared. And that's going to imply that the antiderivative of 1 over 1 minus x squared is going to be sine to the minus 1 of x. In the same vein, uh, the derivative of tangent to the minus 1 of x is 1 over 1 plus x squared. So the antiderivative of 1 over 1 plus x squared is going to be tangent to the minus 1, and so on. Now, let's take a look at uh, one example of this. Notice that if we have uh, the function x squared minus 2x, we can apply the formula for the powers now, and we can apply the formula for the sum. So, let's do this on the board here really quick. Notice that we want to do essentially this. We want to find the antiderivative of this function. By our properties, we can split this in antiderivative of x squared minus antiderivative of 2x. Oh, this is a constant. We can take it out of the antiderivative minus twice x dx. Now, at this point, uh, we can use the formula of the powers. This is x to the 2 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 minus twice x plus the 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 and then plus c because we want to include any of the variations. So this is going to be x to the 3 over 3 minus 2 x to the 2 over 2 plus c or x to the 3 over 3 minus x squared plus c. Okay. So this is uh, the, the way that we can apply all the properties that I just show you. Here we're applying the power, um, power rule for antiderivatives. Here uh, on the breaking, we're using um, the derivative of a sum can be expressed as the sum of two deri uh, antiderivatives and um, the taking out the constant. The antiderivative of a function uh, by a constant is just uh, take out the constant and do the antiderivative and multiply. Now, you can see um, all the variations of this if I'm using a particular constant. Um, everything is going to change if I get information about how the antiderivative is supposed to be. So if they tell me, oh, the antiderivative is passing through the point 1, 1 over 3, then I know it's going to be this one because this one is the one that produces uh, that value. Okay. Now, another example. Let me use 
um, DNT derivatives. So we have the function f of f prime equals one minus one x squared. And so we want to found, find x, uh, f of x, the antiderivative, of course. So we want to find this, f of x, and f of x is going to be given by uh, the antiderivative of one over one minus x squared. Now uh, we can split again this into one dx minus one over x squared dx. This can be represented as x to the zero. So we can see it with the powers and this is x to the minus two. So again, we can we get to use uh, the power rules here for the antiderivatives. This is x to the zero plus one over zero plus one minus x to the minus two plus one over minus two plus one, okay? So that's going to be equals to x minus x to the minus one over minus one or x plus one over x. So what at the end this is going to be. Now, uh, if I trade the my variable for t, I can call this function uh, t plus one over t and I can give all the possible solutions once that I add the constant c. So let's not forget to add the constant c at the end. And, and so that's going to give me a different range of possibilities. It can be all this type of curves that we have in here. And uh, later, if I get more information, so let's like say, for example, f of one is zero. Oh, so this is going to be the curve that works for that. But if I tell you, oh, okay, so f of minus one is minus two. So this curve instead is going to be my solution because I can verify that um, the constant holds for this value, okay? All right, this is the end of uh, part one of this, um, of this section. In part two, we're gonna take a look at more examples and applications of uh, this notion.